Hello, and on behalf of VMUG, I'd like to welcome you to today's webcast, Ensuring Continuous Health of Your Infrastructure with VxRail Lifecycle Management and HCI System Software, presented by Daniel Chu, Senior Technical Marketing Manager for Dell Technologies. Thank you for participating in today's webcast and for your continued support in the global VMUG program. Before we begin, I have three quick housekeeping items to go over. First, today's webcast will be recorded and available for you on demand. You will receive an email with the on-demand link, so keep an eye out for that. Second, the Q&A session will follow today's presentation. All questions will need to be entered in the question window near the bottom of your GoToWebinar screen. Third, there will be a short online evaluation that pops up as you exit the webcast. Please take a minute and let us know what you thought of today's session and what you might like to see going forward. All attendees from today's webcast who opted in at registration will be entered into a raffle to win a $100 Amazon gift card. The winner will be contacted directly by Dell, so good luck. All right, let's get started. Daniel, I'll turn it over to you now. All right, thanks, Julie. So good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Chu from the VxWell Technical Marketing Team. So I do have a few panels here that is gonna uh, take care of the Q&A uh, as I present. We have uh, Mike Gordon, that's uh, who's from the product management team. We have Joe Maurer and Jeremy Merrill, who's from our VX, VX Seals team. So actually, VX Seals is probably more of an internal name. So think of them as product technologists. That might be a more familiar term for you. So the topic for today is really around the VXRL advantage with the capabilities from the HCI system software, specifically around the lifecycle management and also our SaaS-based multi-cluster management. Uh, those are the two main topics of today. and at the, uh, as I go over the SaaS-based multi-cluster management, I also have an interactive demo that I'm gonna demo to you and show you some of the uh, features and function, uh, feature set of, of uh, SaaS-based multi-cluster management. As Julia mentioned, there is a Q&A chat feature in this, uh, on this uh, platform and the panelists will be answer, you can submit those questions in real time and our the panelists will be able to answer them uh, as you submit those questions. And um, as Julie also mentioned, uh, I'll save some time to answer those uh, outstanding questions or highlight any information uh, that came out of the Q&A that our panelists has already answered. So without further ado, I'm gonna move on and start the presentation. So VxRel, it's the only jointly engineered HCI system with VMware or VMware and made to enhance uh, the VMware's value. In that sense that Dell Technologies is the leader in the HCI system, uh, HCI market. And uh, according to IDC's uh, Q1 tracker, it makes up a third of the share of the uh, HCI market. And VxRel is a significant reason why Dell is in that leader uh, leadership position. The VxRel business is strong and its growth continues to outpace the HCI market. Um, Dell just actually came out with their quarterly uh, earnings report last week, and VxRel was one of those highlights. Uh, for the VxRel business, we have 8,600 uh, plus VxRel customers. The annual revenue uh, run rate is about $2 billion, with over 103,000 uh, nodes that's already been sold. For VxRel, we sell into edge use cases, core use cases, as well as the cloud. And there are a wide variety of workloads that we uh, that the VxRel is suitable for. VDI is definitely a very popular use case, especially the last two quarters. Uh, video surveillance, SAP HANA, uh, AI, AI ML workloads, definitely more and more use cases that are using those, especially the ones that require GPUs. And also cloud, cloud native applications that are using Kubernetes on uh, that's using uh, VMware Cloud Foundation on VxRail. So these are some of the use cases. There are a lot more use cases that the uh, VxRail is uh, selling into and suitable for. So what do we mean by jointly engineer for VMware with VMware and to enhance VMware? It's really about innovating and working with the VMware team to deliver what the market wants, what you, the customer, wants. The, uh, the market dynamics were already pushing for IT administrators to manage more with less time, even as environments get more complex. So things like um, automation, consolidated management, 
software defined infrastructure or all areas that VMware has been working on and delivering for the HCI market. But there's still a there's still a significant chunk of that HCI market that want even more simplicity. And with the limitations that many of you face in doing most things virtually nowadays, I can see this chunk of the market will go will grow even faster. You're gonna want even more simplicity. So speaking to that, these are the VxRail's design principles that builds on the VMware capabilities. Uh, curated experience. Not only automate the system operations for the administrator, but also to offload the burden of decision making. Let VxRail be the trusted advisor for lifecycle management of your cluster. Every time you need to perform a cluster update, you know that VxRail has invested in the resources to allow you to confidently get that done. So that means every version update is backed by 25,000 hours of testing for the entire stack. That's the hardware and the software. The second design principle is automation at scale. Our customers love the product and are continually growing out their VxRail footprint, node by node, cluster by cluster. And the need for multi-cluster management becomes a bigger deal. Once, uh, once you start extending the scope of managing clusters to beyond just a few vCenter servers, it's a less fluid experience. And VxRail looks to deliver that curated experience, experience for your clusters at scale. The last design principle, any platform, any workload. And this is really about expanding where VxRail can be a suitable solution. That could be introducing more hardware configurations like uh, with GPUs for VDI, machine learning, video graphics rendering use cases. There are more and more workloads that are gonna require GPUs and we're gonna be offering more of those configurations with GPUs to really expand that, expand that workload possibilities on VxRail. Introducing platforms that can endure harsh or space constrained environments like ships, planes, remote outposts. So when I talked about VxRail for the edge, this is where we're, uh, this will kind of what I'm talking about, introducing those platforms that can meet those requirements that are at those edge environments. Edge is a pretty broad term. There are various requirements that are, that comes with it. So we're looking into all these type of use cases and trying to build out solutions that are suitable though for those uh, various edge um, use cases. And as with, and as with VMware leads with Tanzu for cloud, uh, uh, cloud native applications, VxRail is going to be there step by step to deliver that curated experience for VMware with, uh, with VSR with Tanzu. And so this is why VxRail has been successful so far, and how we continue to deliver what the market wants. So let's turn our attention to the specifics of the uh, VxRail advantage. What does the curated experience involve, and what is automated at scale? So the curated experience is about the VxRail lifecycle management. VxRail HCI system software is where all that value, all that VxRail value comes from. Uh, VxRail HCI system software integrates the VMware software in the PowerEd server so it can be managed as a single unified system. So things like automation, orchestration, and lifecycle management are the direct benefits of it. Uh, specifically, VxRail uh, technically, VxRail HCI system software is basically a VM that's running on a vCN cluster. And with this HCI system software, it is really one of the major components of what makes a vCN cluster a VxRail cluster. VxRail lifecycle management is the ability to deliver continuously validated state, meaning throughout the life of your VxRail cluster, the hardware the software components in the stack are interoperable with one another to deliver that optimal availability and performance for the applications running on it. And we do that by validating the compliance of the cluster configuration through testing. That's the 25,000 test hours that was on the other slide. Each time you do a cluster update, we define that validated state, uh, validated version set, or that validated state, and provide that automated experience for you to execute that update. The ecosystem connectors allows this automated and orchestrated experience. 
Um, so this curated experience is the bread and butter of VxRail. How you perform lifecycle management of your clusters can be done using three different ways. You have the VxRail Manager, which is a plugin into vCenter server. Gives you a very familiar interface, especially for VMware customers. Multi-cluster management is our SaaS-based web portal that gives you that ability to run multi-cluster LCM operations. And there's also the RESTful APIs. And for customers that are looking to script these operations and run it as, a, in a, as batch operations, or they want to use VxRail as that foundation to develop their as a service uh, infrastructure, they can also use RESTful APIs uh, for infrastructure as code. And lastly, VxRail is backed by our Dell support team, which gives you a single point of contact. You don't have to go from vendor to vendor for troubleshooting. Talk to customers in the past where that is a huge pain point for them in which when they do encounter an issue, they basically have to ping pong across different vendors to troubleshoot and root cause the, situ uh, root cause the, the issue. You don't have to do that with VxRail clusters. You have Dell support, which has the VMware expertise to resolve your issues as well. So let's dig deeper into VxRail LCM. So what are the pain points that lifecycle management with VxRail addresses, is looking to address? What is the importance of VxRail's continuously validated states? So one is to address the overburdened IT staff. We, with the VxRail lifecycle management, it provides up to 60% improved efficiency. So in what areas are we talking about? Well, for an over, overburdened IT staff, it's about limited resources to research and upgrade, research upgrade options and optimal components. That means time to investigate and look at, when I look at the different uh, versions, uh, different versions, firmware and software of each component and trying to build that validated version set uh, to upgrade to. Once you identify that version set, it also takes time to do testing and that really diverts the time and the resources from strategic activities. And with the amount of updates that vSphere always comes out with, this is a very continuous process, a frequent process. vSphere comes out with updates very often, whether it's major or minor releases or even express patches or security patches. You as administrator have to figure out whether you need to update that cluster. And once you identify that you need to do that, you also have to identify the different versions for each uh, for every single component that needs to uh, that needs to support that uh, software that you need to upgrade to. So that is a continuous process in a time-consuming process. Disruption to business with the continuously validated state, the lifecycle management with VxRel reduces time with uh, by up to 88% fewer unplanned outages. What do we mean by unplanned outages? Could be unsuccessful migrations or upgrades that can result in outages. So oftentimes it could also be user error. You may not be able to do the full end-to-end -to -end testing that would be able to mitigate that issue. The amount of scheduled time, the downtime for upgrades and migrate workloads. So if you were to upgrade component by component, that's gonna take a lot longer than if it was an automated process for the entire cluster. So Scheduling downtime can be a, that downtime can be longer than you would want that to be. And with all the different components that are part of the cluster, there's also this incremental change management that you would have to deal with. And that could also delay updates as well. Budget efficiency. So lower cost by 47% compared to a public cloud solution and 50% lower operational costs compared to legacy environments. So that's really speaking to the significant amount of resources spent on managing the infrastructure and also the administrative time to research and upgrade the, uh, uh, to research and upgrade, which can drain a lot of the OPEX. All right, so how does VxRail LCM compare to other approaches? Well, we're gonna take a look at a couple of them. Traditional or manual approach could be legacy infrastructure or customers want to building, who, who are wanting to build HCI systems completely on their own. For a cluster update, 
it's their job to define the entire stack end to end if you uh, with this approach they do their own interoperability testing and they would have to acquire the updates update files for each component separately then they would plan the schedule downtime and upgrade the components separately from a maintenance perspective they'll have to deal with multiple vendors whenever there are issues that arise with their cluster the next one is with uh, we're going to uh, compare to is with v VLCM, the VMware, uh, the vSphere Lifecycle Manager that came out with vSphere 7.0. It automates some of the LCM experience, mainly around the actual execution of the update. So if you were to uh, pick this, if you were to compare against this solution, what the experience would look like is when defining the desired state, the VLCM with support of the hardware vendors will give the administrators the ability to do uh, to be able to define that image from vCenter. They still have to do their own validation. If the hardware vendor uh, added their plugin to VLCM, the administrator would then be able to get the firmware bits and also uh, get the firmware bits off of VLCM. So in that way, they can get their serv uh, software and firmware bits all in one, uh, in one spot and be able to upgrade their cluster uh, using that single automated approach, uh, process that VLCM provides. The vendor ex support experience is still the same as the manual approach. So you will still have to deal with multiple vendors. And so from a, I guess from the perspective of troubleshooting, that experience does not change. So with VXRL, it's the curated experience. We keep your clusters in a continuously validated state. It's really about the you picking the version that you want to update clusters to, and we provide the full package, and we provide that automated full stack upgrade, and Dell is your single point of contact and uh, for support. So in that sense, we do we define the state for you. It's all validated. You just pick that validated state, and you basically just upgrade and use the automated uh, upgrade process to update your cluster with, and the support experience is much different than what your traditional manual approach would be, and even with vSAN ready nodes as well. But that said, VXL isn't for everyone. There's a reason for each approach. Someone who wants to do a manual approach wants that maximum flexibility and control, and they're willing to trade simplicity for it. And But someone who prefers to reduce simplicity and simplify the operational administration as much as possible will, will find VXL and what it delivers very compelling. So let me dive deeper into discussing the differences between VXL LCM and VLCM, because I know this was a huge topic when vSphere 7.0 came out, and this is probably still some questions that's left uh, that still need to be answered. So I'm gonna spend some time on this slide to kind of go over some of the main things that are, I guess, that differs uh, between VXL LCM and VLCM. So in my explanation, I'll break down LCM into three areas, planning for update, executing the update, and sustaining. First off with planning. When it comes to planning the update, researching, identification, compliance checking, validation testing are typical tasks that you would have to do when you plan for a cluster update. For VLCM, it's up to the customer to define that HCI stack and version set to go to. So the responsibility is on you. Hardware vendors may alleviate some of the burden, but it's ultimately on you as an administrator for identifying that version set and also uh, making sure that it is a validated version set for you to upgrade to. That's not the case with VXRL. So with VXRL, we're the ones that determine that version set, that validated state that you should upgrade to. And we basically do all the work of identifying that version set and validating it before you before providing that version set to you. When it comes to executing, to perform the cluster update, acquiring the update files and executing the upgrade are areas I want to highlight. For VLCM, it has built in the hooks for hardware vendors to provide the administrators the ability, administrators the ability to acquire the update files. It's entirely up to the hardware vendor to provide, to build, to basically provide that plugin into VLCM. With, if the hardware vendor provides that plugin, then they have the ability to get those files um, 
from the hardware vendor's repository, but you'll be able to do that uh, from the point of control of the VLCM. So some uh, vSAN ready node solutions uh, do have this type of uh, integration. Uh, Dell, uh, the Dell, uh, Dell servers have that, so the Dell uh, vSAN ready nodes have this integration, so you can get those files through VLCM through that plugin. I believe HP also has that as well. But for other solutions, obviously you would have to check whether they have that integration with VLCM. For VXL, it's different. VXL delivers this all in a single package. You don't have to look uh, look through our other hardware vendors for um, for any of the integration. This the, that package is delivered as a whole to the customer. They just have to pick that valid data state. Pre-checks. So pre-checks is a big deal. So if you you have set a maintenance window and you're ensuring your cluster can upgrade successfully within that window is important. So one way to ensure that uh, that the clusters can successfully update is through pre-checks. Make sure your cluster is ready before you reach, reach that maintenance window. So with uh, VXL, we have a single pre-check to do the full stack. Uh, with the latest software release, we're even adding the ecosystem vendor version compatibility checks. So when you do that VXL pre-check, we also check against the uh, external vCenter, witness host, recover point for VMs, and secure remote services gateway. To make sure that the version that is running on those is compatible with the cluster, with the version that you can update the cluster with. So on top of the hardware and software pre-checks that we do, we're also adding ecosystem vendors and doing version compatibility checks with that as well. With vSAN ready nodes, you typically would have to run multiple pre-checks, which uh, across all these uh, different hardware that you uh, you have on that stack, and that tends to be more time consuming. Next is sustaining. So how I define sustaining is basically activities that you would face during the life of your cluster. How do you keep your applications running non-disruptively as your cluster evolves? So VXL is designed so that your applications really outlast the life of your hardware without disruption. That means no down, downtime as you add new generation hardware, mix uh, different or mix different configuration hardware configurations for different workloads that you have on the cluster, and also to upgrade to the latest software releases. So that's also a a big differentiator that we have with VXL continuously validated states. So in summary, I would say planning and sustaining are probably the biggest things that uh, really differs uh, for VXL LCM uh, versus uh, VLCM. What VLCM has really, uh, has really provided the greatest benefit in, benefit in in terms of cluster update is being able to provide that single automated experience of doing your hardware and software updates from a, using a single process versus splitting it out into different to, uh, two different processes. So in that sense, VLCM has definitely cut down the amount of time it takes for you to do a cluster update. All right, so I've talked about validated state. I just want to get into a little bit more details of what validated state means. It, Includes the different software uh, that's running. That's vSphere, vCN, and the HCI system software. It includes the different hardware components in the server, BIOS, the HBA, network cards, and a lot more things that I cannot, uh, I don't have enough space on this slide to cover. And to have a validated state, each component's firmware or software needs to be researched. A version set for the entire stack needs to be identified then tested and validated for interoperability so that when you upgrade your cluster with this version set, your applications do not experience downtime and it runs with optimal performance. And VXWell does this for you for every vSphere release. As you can tell from this slide, whether it's a major, minor, or express patch, VXWell will provide a validated state for that software release. So for you as an administrator, you choose a validated state you wish to update your cluster to, you can skip releases if you want, and your cluster is always running in a validated state to ensure its compliance and interoperability. So how VXRL organization can give you that 
I guess that sense of confidence to fearlessly upgrade your cluster is from the investment we made in the processes we built to deliver continuously validated states. We have over uh, $60 million of lab, lab investments and over 100 plus staff members dedi dedicated to testing and quality assurance. Every release goes through 25,000 hours of testing. Our processes identifies, identify the version set for the full stack to ensure availability and performance. Determines the processes determine the proper sequence to update each component, because actually the sequence of updating those components actually does matter. And our technical support team backs up that uh, product if an issue does happen. Our technical support team has the technical expertise to recause and resolve VMware issues as well. And 98% uh, of the VMware related cases that do come in are resolved in-house within the technical uh, the Dell uh, technical support team without needing to consult the VMware support team. And that really streamlines the, um, the, 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 the actual uh, troubleshooting and the resolution process. I believe I do have a infographic that I can provide to you as reference. Just one second, let me give that to you. And set that up to you in the chat window. All right, back to the presentation. So, so there's been, I've, I've spoken a lot about the lifecycle management and the new capabilities that, uh, well, there's a lot about lifecycle management that's been, uh, I've talked about. And there's also a lot of new capabilities that I believe a lot of HCI solutions are coming out with. So on this slide, I just wanted to give you a framework on how to measure the LCM capabilities. And I'll start from the bottom up by the value it brings to the customers. The first tier is upgrade orchestration. And this is really the foundation of delivering lifecycle management. It's about being able to integrate hardware and software to become a single unified system. And by being a single unified system, you can now enable automation orchestration for like full stack operations, like non-disruptive upgrades, health checks, and cluster expansion. It cuts down the time to perform cluster operations. And this is the value tier that is currently being commoditized as more and more solutions offer this level of integration. Once the cluster can provide that foundational value, next tier is configuration stability. And what I mean by configuration stability is the confidence that you have that the applications will run without downtime and will run with optimal performance when you do a cluster update. And how do you offload this risk? And while VxWell provides automated full stack upgrades, which is the foundational tier, uh, value tier. Where the value lies with VXL LCM is that continuously validated state, providing that, it's really about providing that configuration stability. So now that you have operational tasks and um, those are automated and the risk is offloaded, that third tier is decision support. It's really where the area of where many, many companies are investing in to provide value to you as an administrator. Frankly, this is really where, this is where they can charge more money for, it is this value tier uh, now, because it offers this, this really more this differentiating value that many, many of uh, the customer, uh, well, companies are looking to invest in and many of the customers are looking, are, need, are wanting this level of intelligence to kind of offload that decision-making. So how AI can help you make better decisions is really on, really on how or when you should upgrade if you can address an issue before it can actually happen, proactive health monitoring, and also self-driven activities. So if, if AI can help you in those areas, it really can offload not just the operational time of uh, administrating a system, but also the decision-making, the knowledge that you would need to be able to make the decisions to better manage your cluster, to reduce the, the downtime or reduce any potential issues that, that may happen. So, this is the highest tier I see as part of lifecycle management at this point. So in short, the three tiers represent the how, what, and why to lifecycle management. Upgrade orchestration is the how, the mechanics to simplify lifecycle management. Configuration stability is the what, the validation, uh, the validated configuration to run. 
and decision support is the why, the decision making to perform a configuration change. All right, so that's enough about VXL LCM. The next VXL differentiator is our SaaS multi-cluster management, which we used to call VXL ACE if you've heard of it before. Uh, we're undergoing some uh, branding change right now, so we're calling, we're referring to as SaaS multi-cluster management. But you'll know when I uh, go over the demo that all the brand, all the name changing hasn't been completely done yet. So you still see uh, ACE uh, on you still see VXL ACE on the demo itself. The intent of SaaS multi-cluster management is to infuse AI with IT operations. Uh, what I mentioned as the decision support value tier. It, it leverages the LCM automation cap capabilities at a global scale. So from a web portal, you can manage all your clusters from a single view. And with our customers expanding their VXL footprint, centralized management becomes a greater need. The web portal reports on health of the clusters and also uses health scores to indicate hardware issues and performance anomalies. It's a good tool to access the health of the environment very quickly. So just think of it as when you log onto the web portal, you have that single pane of glass to be able to tell you, like, how is my environment operating? And if there is something, and you can easily pinpoint the areas that require your attention through the, uh, the health reporting that is shown on that single pane. SAS multi-cluster management uses a continuously innova uh, continuous innovation and continuously continuous delivery framework, meaning it's an agile framework built to deliver new features frequently. So uh, when you log on to the web portal, there is a welcome page. And that welcome page, anytime there's any updates to, uh, to, to the web portal, that, uh, that, that welcome page will actually, that welcome message will actually tell you what has uh, been added to, uh, to the, what are the new capabilities added. So SAS multi-cluster management is not even a year old. So there are definitely things that we offer right now, but there are more things uh, that are helpful in terms of like health monitoring, and on some of the lifecycle management operations. But there are more things that we do plan to add in the areas of like providing insight to improve system performance, utilization, and recommendations for lifecycle management operations. So we've built, we've built that framework to be able to add these type of features over time. And uh, it's just really a matter of being able to execute upon uh, all these the different things that we have on our, uh, in our plan. So let's discuss how it works. In order to perform LCM operations, SAS multi-cluster management relies on the core LCM capabilities of HCI system software. That means the connectors to hardware and software and also the automated LCM operations. VXL HCI system also, uh, software also has a data collector service that gathers the telemetry data of the cluster. And that data is fed over to the Dell EMC cloud via the SRS gateway. And this is the same secure remote services gateway that's used to do dial home with the Dell technical support team. The data is stored and analyzed and processed to give you a global view of all your clusters, the cluster topology, health scores, it allows you to do multi-cluster LCM operations, and also it gives you an inventory, also gives you inventory data of about each node in the cluster as well. And all this is provided through the web portal that is hosted by Dell. Any operations performed on the cluster is done on the cluster itself, and the request is sent from the web portal to the cluster via the SRS gateway. So let's talk about the capability of the SAS multi-cluster management, uh, what has today. One, rapidly detect anomalies. So Multi, the SAS multi-cluster management uses the Dell EMC best practices and historical data of how customers use VXL as that baseline knowledge. And we perform infrastructure machine learning against the telemetry data to spot those anomalies. Simplify monitoring. Telemetry data is used to calculate a quantitative health score. 
So the combination of the health score and color coding makes it easier for you to assess the state of your VXO clusters. And performance anomalies that we can detect also can impact the health score. So you know if there is a if there is something if there is a performance anomaly impacting health score. Capacity forecast, and that's just really about providing capacity usage trends. And life cycle management, and this is really around the uh, planning part of life cycle management. Uh, so right now you have the ability to download and stage update bundles on clusters. So from, from the web portal, you're able to to facilitate the downloading and the staging of the, um, the that package, the update package, onto the clusters themselves. And this can be particularly helpful if you have a lot of clusters and you don't want to go on every single V center to, to download the update bundle. So from this web portal, you have the ability to just to facilitate and orchestrate that downloading of that update bundle onto those clusters from that central that from that centralized management. And um, performing LCM pre-checks, that's also a um, that's also beneficial as well. So you can kick off all these pre-checks and uh, of the for all these different clusters to make sure that these clusters are ready for the for that update. So the the benefit of doing this pre-check is really around making sure that your cluster is ready for that for that update. If it's not ready. Um, then you don't have to schedule that uh, that maintenance window. So this really helps you out in terms of planning that cluster update and making sure that like uh, making sure that when you do have that maintenance window, you're able to perform it and that cluster can update successfully. All right, next is a demo. So let me switch over to my browser to uh, demonstrate uh, SAS multi-cluster management. Just one second. Okay, so right now you should be seeing my internet browser and I am, so this is actually, uh, I can actually provide you a link to this as well because you, can on, on your spare time, you can actually ac access this interactive demo. And it showcases all the different uh, features of lifecycle management for VXRL and as well as multi-cluster management. So let me send you that link. So here I'm gonna show you, it still says VXRL A, so that's the multi-cluster uh, management feature. Uh, let's see, actually, I do not want to have the call out so I can uncheck that. But I still want the hotspots because I don't want to remember exactly every single spot that I need to click through to advance the demo. So this will help me out. So this is um so this is basically the URL to get to the multi-cluster management. Uh, you would need to have um you need, would need to have your support credentials, your Dell support credentials, uh, to be able to access it. Once you enter, this is the terms and conditions page. You can read it. Most people probably don't. And this is the uh, the welcome splash screen I was telling you about. So, as we make a uh, new introduce new features to it, we will provide it provide that information in the splash screen to give you kind of like a little blurb of what that feature is to give you an idea of what it is, and you can kind of mess uh, play with it uh, once you log in. So once you log in, you get this as a default screen. It's basically the summary tab and gives you an idea of all your clusters, all the clusters that you have. So we report against, so as you can tell on the left-hand side, it's structured by your vCenter servers. If you go to navigate underneath it, you'll see all the um, VXL clusters are, are part of that vCenter server. And from, if you go on the very top of the topology, it'll basically give you a summary tab of all the clusters that is uh, associated to your account. Gives you the health score, the number of clusters that's on there, the number of hosts that is in that VXL footprint of yours, how many are operating in poor health, fear health, and good. And there's color coding. There's also a quantitative health score that I'll uh, dive deeper into. And you can dig into the cluster itself and understand kind of like domain, 
or what data, is, uh, data center is part of, number of hosts that's part of this cluster. Uh, you can also dig into the health, the health score. This is the uh, numeric health score that I was talking about. You know what VXL software version is running, the storage and the number of VMs is in that cluster. This, all, this is the logical view. So there's also a physical view. So if you want to see kind of like the geographical, a geographic distribution of where your clusters lie in the world, we have the ability to show that to you as well. So here, all our clusters for this uh, example is in the US and there are, and there are uh, clusters in three states. Going back to logical view, I wanna show you the health score. So the health score here, basically this is for this particular cluster, the health score is 91. It has six uh, total issues. And you can actually see the uh, timeline of this health score over up to one week ago. And just to see how the health score trended. If you wanna get into details of what is impacting the health score, you can go to health score details tab. And I'll show you what are the ones that are actually, dec uh, that are decreasing the health score. In this particular example, I want to show you the, there's a performance anomaly that was detected. So you can click on that one and it'll tell you more information about it. And on the performance issue uh, section right here on the right, it'll tell you information about what the performance anomaly is. And you can actually click on that link and it'll direct you exactly to that point in time where it detected that anomaly. Or you can go on the performance tab and kind of dig in uh, dig into that uh, or check that anomaly from there. So in this example, you can tell this is the area that was highlighted. This is where the uh, performance anomaly was detected. It was a networking issue that it was uh, uh, that, uh, that that flagged that as an anomaly. Next part, you can also get the alarms, and these alarms are basically stuff that we uh, alarms that we grabbed out of the vCenter server that's reported on on this web portal. You, there's a storage tab to give you an understanding of what is your uh, capacity usage and what how is the what is the usage trend over time. We do provide VM information and this is pretty much at the level in which we provide it. We don't get any deeper than this. And this is just basically inventory of the number of VMs that are, is running on the cluster. And this is the type of information we are providing in, in the web portal. We don't get any deeper than this. Inventory, we provide you information about the cluster. You can get information about each node itself and like the different uh, versions, the EXXI version, it could be talking about the different um, firmware that is running on the node and the hardware components on the node itself. Here is the, uh, we're gonna go back and just talk about the software version. And this is really around the life cycle management, uh, life, cycle, life cycle management operations. So here you can actually click on the update tab or you can actually go to the update tab right here. And you have the ability to basically uh, do, I'm gonna show you the pre-check stuff. So here you can basically, it lists all the clusters as on the update tab. And the ones that you want to do a pre-check for, you can basically just select, okay, this is the current version I'm running on this cluster. What is the target version I want to upgrade to? You select, for this, for this example, 47300. You click on that one. You can do multiple, you can do pre-checks on multiple clusters. And you basically can just do a pre-check on these two clusters to make sure that they're ready for an upgrade. So this helps out especially a great deal when uh, you want to just determine the readiness of your cluster. So before you even plan that maintenance window, it's a, good, it's a good way of making sure that like, okay, is this cluster ready for an update? If it's not, let me address the issues before I even schedule that maintenance window. Before you click okay to, to start the pre-check, this just gives you an idea of what is what needs to be upgraded within that VXL stack. Uh, so if you wanna go from 47100 to 47300, these, these are the components that need to be updated. You got the Dell PT agent, which is, this runs on the PowerEdge server. You have the VIP file uh, and the VXL software. So the vCenter server and the ESXi is already up to date. So if you look at here, this also shows you kind of a breakdown of what needs to be updated 
on the of uh, to in order to go to get to four seven three hundred. So once you kick it off, this is the progress bar, and um, you can tell from that task detail what it has done so far as as it's doing the pre-check. You can wait till it completes the pre-check to get the final report. You can tell from one of them completed successfully, that means the pre-check passed, one did not. So here you can dig into the report and figure out what, it, what failed, and you can address those issues before you go ahead and perform that cluster update. So once you've done that pre-check, you know which ones are ready for that update, you can then go ahead and download that update bundle. So here, you can do the same, you can just click on the same target version for that cluster and click download and it'll just tell you like, okay, what do I need to download to be able to perform this cluster update? It'll tell you how big the file size it has to be and the estimated download time. And you just go ahead and download it. And that's basically the demo I want to provide you for multi-cluster management. Let me switch back over to the presentation. All right. All right, so, so last uh, parts of this presentation, REST APIs. So REST APIs is really about just providing operational simplification for you know things like large scale VXL cluster deployments or streamlining infrastructure operations for IT as a service. Uh, REST APIs exposes all those VXL value differentiating capabilities that I just talked about, the LCM operations. It makes it easier for it to consume if you don't want to consume it through the multi-cluster management uh, web portal or through VXL manager, you want to do this over scripts. The, so in terms of uh, being able to do as scripts, you can integrate VxRel with infrastructure as code environments, such as Puppet, Ansible, and Chef. If you want to just really just script the lifecycle management processes versus just doing over the GUI, whether that's the web portal or the uh, VxRel manager. So things like typical admin, tis, uh, admin tasks such as monitoring, querying, reboot, reboot shutdown of the cluster, uh, VxRel cluster deployment, uh, LCM upgrades, all those things can are available through RESTful API. It's also easily accessible if you want to uh, do it over a scripting interface that's, uh, that's over using power, VMware Power CLI. We do have a, a VxL.API Windows PowerShell module that allows you to be able to use um, a PowerShell or Power CLI to, to execute these REST APIs. So we do have Swagger integration, which is basically a web-based um, portal for you to kind of read about more about these RESTful APIs. It gives the um, user the ability to kind of like read up about the APIs, test out, understand what the inputs are required for the API and what the outputs would look like if you were to run these RESTful APIs. These are the same APIs that are provided to uh, for our uh, VMware Cloud Foundation on VxRel solutions. It makes use of these APIs, so that way you get that fully automated experience of lifecycle managing your uh, VxRel from VMware SCDC Manager. So these APIs are also being used in that uh, use case as well. All right. So let's talk about the uh, security. So with a VxRel, the HCI system software and also the PowerEdge server is built in accordance to Dell EMC secure development lifecycle process. And VMware uh, VMware software is has a, is, is a, goes follows that a similar standard as well. This security applies to ensures availability, integrating integrity, and confidence across all use cases, whether it's edge, uh, core, and cloud. And when we're talking about integrated LCM for secure, rapid, and automated updating, it's really talking about, when we talk about that validated state that we, uh, that we provide for every fees fair release, we do have a commitment in which we deliver that validated, set, uh, validated version or that package, uh, that validated state to support that fees fair release within that 30 days. So when 
for example, when uh, so vSphere came out with 7.0 patch 01, I believe it was last month. And within that 30 days, uh, VxRel came out with that uh, with a validated state to support that package as well. So as you need to, as you want to take advantage of all the VMware innovations, um, VxRel does support that validated state within 30 days. So that way you can also take advantage of those innovations as well as making, as also have that assurance that that entire stack is interoperable with one another, one another to really kind of uh, make, making sure that your application is uh, is running uh, with the best uptime possible and also with the uh, best performance possible. Uh, lastly, security. So definitely a lot of security features uh, here. The ones I want to highlight is the let's see access and authentication. So in our one of our latest release, we're supporting the two-factor authentication that's provided through vCenter. We have network segmentation. If you want to do seg micro segmentation, we support that as well. Um, so in our latest software release, we also provided uh, FIPS 142, 140-2 level one validated cryptography on our HCI system software. So people in the government, uh, government sector uh, can actually uh, use VX or run VxRel clusters for their application workloads because we do have this level of um, security compliance to be able to run those uh, particular work, those type of workloads as well. So that really does it for the presentation. Um, so this just really wraps up, uh, wraps up what the HCI system software is about in terms of delivering continuously validated state using the ecosystem connectors and the electronic compatibility matrix to really ensure that interoperability and that validated uh, configuration for you to run uh, VxRel clusters and uh, confidently knowing that applications are running in the best uptime and performance possible. LCM operations is available through VxRel Manager, multi-cluster manage management uh, web portal, as well as the RESTful APIs. And this is all backed by single point of contact through Dell technical support in which they have the uh, VMware expertise to even troubleshoot those issues without requiring uh, consultation with VMware at, I think, like 98% of the cases that come in. And that's it for the presentation. Um, so right now I'm gonna go over the uh, Q&A to see if there's any outstanding questions that I want to address. Let's see. So there seems to be one. I'm looking through the questions right now. Um, I'm not sure, if Jeremy, Joe, if you can come off me. Is there any ones in particular that you want to point out to for me to emphasize? Yeah, I think you've got. I think we've got most of them, and we're we're around. I mean, we can if you if anyone else has any additional questions. And there still are questions coming in, so um, yeah, please. I guess we can continue to ask. And yeah, and and uh, Daniel, if there's anything that you wanted to highlight, I guess maybe uh, there was one that I think just kind of again emphasizing kind of the differences between VxRail, LCM, vSphere, VLCM. It's, uh, maybe a, a topic that uh, looks like it's still kind of there's a question about that, but uh, sure, that, sure. Keep doing Q and A here. Okay. Um, yeah. So in terms of VLCM, I would say the greatest advances that it, it has provided is really in the um, automated upgrade of both the hardware and software. So what what was the I guess we'll, I would describe the previous experience before VLCM is that when you want to do a cluster update of your vSAN cluster you would have to do your software and hardware basically separately. That would mean that you would have to go through an entire boot cycle of each um, to, to upgrade your software for each node. And you would have to do another boot cycle of your hardware to be able to perform the firmware updates of the hardware on that node itself. So multiple boot cycles. So what VLCM ha has done is basically 
provided it has really kind of unified that process of being able to just do a single boot cycle to do both your software and hardware. So the automation of that part has definitely really has cut down a lot the amount of time it would take to do a cluster update. I would say what continues to be, I guess, what differentiate uh, differentiates via VXRL LCM versus VLCM is I would say the really more in the planning process and the sustaining process. The planning process in terms of identi identifying that version set and also doing the interoperability testing. So even with VLCM, that burden is still on the customer to to actually do all that work for them, uh, to to do all that work, meaning that they still have to go ahead and they still have to spend the time to investigate and research and identify that version set and do all the testing that would need to to give them that confidence that they can successfully do that cluster update and it's not going to impact their applications. Uh, the other part of it is the sustaining part. Um, so as your cluster age over time, you want to take advantage of the latest uh, innovations that's coming out from the software and as well as the hardware itself. So right now, the limitation with VLCM is that you have to have the same configuration. Uh, you, you basically have to have the same configuration type or identical configuration on all your nodes in the cluster in order to take advantage of VLCM. So that can be in kind of prohibitive over time if you want to take advantage of like new hardware technology. You want to, uh, to if there's like a new, uh, if, if you have uh, if you have new uh, har uh, inno hardware innovations that, that are coming out in new uh, servers that you want to take advantage of, you wouldn't be able to use VLCM to update uh, to to um, to update that cluster because it only supports that identical image on all the nodes in for in the cluster in order to perform lifecycle management using VLCM. So in that sense, it limits you in terms of being able to, um, I guess, uh, to add uh, different nodes over time in your cluster. So I would say those are probably the two areas of different uh, differentiation that VXL LCM still has with, uh, versus VLCM. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I, I appreciate that. So I think a really good uh, kind of approach to at least differentiating the, the two. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other ones that I should touch them on? Because I noticed there's a lot of questions and it's going to take me a while just to read through and see which ones seems to be uh, if whether there's a theme around all these questions. I think it's a good time to kind of just wrap up the presentation. Um, unless Jeremy, uh, Joe, Mike, there's any other outstanding questions that you want me to address? Okay, uh, Julie, I'm gonna pass it back yep. to you. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for taking the time to speak to us today. As a reminder to the audience, you will receive a follow-up email with the on-demand link from today's webcast. To find out more about the VMUG webcast program, visit vmug.com and check out the education page. Please make sure to complete the online evaluation that will pop up as you exit the webcast and let us know how today's session went. And from all of us here at VMUG, thank you and have a great rest of your day.